Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well. So as I've started making these tutorials on my channel, one of the most requested by far is how to draw clothing. I've gotten a lot of comments over the past couple of years on YouTube about how I draw clothing and how people really like it. And I've been asked for a very long time actually to make a tutorial, so here we are. Just like all of my other tutorials though, I do want to give the disclaimer that I put big air quotes in tutorial. I don't want people to look at this video or any of my tutorials honestly and think that this is how you need to do it and this is the only way to do it and this is the right way to do it. Because really whatever I talk about in these tutorials, while I do talk about some of the fundamentals that you need to keep in mind, for the most part it's just how I draw each of these individual things. So keep that in mind while I'm explaining. I don't know why I couldn't remember that word. <laughs> Just keep that in mind throughout this video. And also I have some other tutorials. I believe I only have two up so far. I have an anatomy tutorial and a hair tutorial. So after this video, if you're interested in any of that, feel free to check those out. But first, let's get into clothes. Another disclaimer that I want to give really quick is that this isn't a tutorial on how to design clothes because that is more of like a character design process rather than how to draw clothes. I made a video quite a while ago about my character design process but I've been thinking about making a new one because that one's pretty old at this point. My art has changed a lot, my process has changed a lot. Let me know if that's something that you guys are interested in but this isn't a design video. It's a how to draw things and make them look like clothes video. Another thing I want to say really quickly before I really get into it is to use reference pictures. I talk about using reference pictures a lot on my channel and that's because it is a very very helpful and useful thing. Growing up I kind of had this thought in my head that if I use pictures or any sort of reference to make a drawing I was a bad artist and good artists just draw from their head which is not true. Don't do that. <laughs> and I wanted to say that because I can sit here and tell you all day about how I draw clothes. It, it still might not make sense, one, because I'm awful at speaking, <laughs> but two, this is something that I kind of just learned over time through using references and drawing experience. So if I say something in this video that doesn't quite make sense, just, just think about what I say and then draw from reference and, and then eventually over time it'll just click in your head. So now let's actually get to drawing. So clothes, am I right? <laughs> Aside from designing clothes, I think the biggest issue people have with drawing clothing is wrinkles and when to draw wrinkles, how wrinkles work, and just all of that. So that's going to be a lot of what I'm talking about. So wrinkles are caused by a couple of different things and it's important to know these things when you're drawing wrinkles because it'll just make a lot more sense and you don't your wrinkles will seem like they have more purpose and they make more logical sense than just adding random lines. So the first things that I'm going to be covering is the type of fabric that a clothing is made out of and the fit of the article of clothing. Ow. <laughs> now you don't need to know everything about every fabric ever and honestly you don't even need to know what kind of fabric your character is wearing, you just need to know if it's thick or thin and that's the basics. Like at least when you're starting that's all you really need to know. Thin fabric and thick fabric bunch up differently and they cause different kinds of wrinkles. And the same thing with loose fitting clothing and tight fitting clothing. Sketch out a couple of the different bodies, which I probably should have done before I started filming, if I'm being completely honest, but <laughs> let's forget about being a professional even though this is my job. Am I right? Let's say we're drawing a loose t-shirt on this person. Now depending on how the shirt is styled, there will be more or less wrinkles, but let's say a person is just wearing it just as is and that's all there is to it. There's not going to be as many wrinkles. Obviously, like since it's loose, it's not going to be very form-fitting to the body. It's still important to sketch out the body so you know where it is. Wrinkles can also be affected by your character's body type, which I'll go over a little bit later. Uh, let's say it's like hitting the hips, so there might be some wrinkles here. For the most part, for looser articles of clothing, there's not going to be much. It's just going to be this. <laughs> now, tight articles of clothing is a different story. They tend to have more wrinkles to them because since it's more wrapped around the body, I guess you could say, there's more like the clothes are being bent a little bit more. I don't really know how to explain it, so I'll just show you. <laughs> For example, if it's molding over the chest, there will be wrinkles kind of underneath. And there we go. Loose clothes has less wrinkles, tight clothes has more wrinkles. So aside from the fit, it's also affected by the fabric. Thinner articles of clothing tends to wrinkle more. When an article of clothing has thinner fabric, it means that it's more flexible, generally. There are thin fabrics that 
are stiffer, but as a general rule of thumb, they're more flexible. So they're easier to like bend around and take a different shape. But then let's say you have like something thicker, like a jacket or a sweater. Since that's thicker, it's going to have less wrinkles to it because it's more of like a solid defined shape. Let's draw a leather jacket, epic. <laughs> especially with something like this, like with leather or pleather, like they're made to last longer, which those types of things generally have a thicker material. And now you might be thinking, Oliver, these little sketches right here, that's all fine and dandy, but what the heck? What, how do you draw wrinkles? <laughs> so if we, have, if we make a lull, we have a box. This is a box. <laughs> so some other important things to keep in mind is gravity. Gravity plays a bigger role than you might think when it comes to clothing. The next one is being stretched or pulled. And then there are clothing that's being bunched up or folded. And then we have movement, which in itself isn't a type of wrinkle, but I'll talk about how that's an important thing to keep in mind when we get there. So gravity, this is honestly a more basic one. And if you're just getting started in drawing clothing, I would recommend focusing more on this one because this is the type of stuff that you will see with the character just standing there in more simple poses. So let's say we have a sphere. Classic sphere. The reason that this is the most simple and common one is because imagine this sphere is a body part. Obviously we have like different limbs and different body parts. The different articles of clothing wraps around those different body parts. Don't know why I'm flailing my arms around. So basically if you like let, if you're wearing a shirt, if we go back up here, this is gravity <laughs> because the shirt is like draping off of the shoulders over here. It's like draping off of like the chest and the other parts in this stuff. So yeah. I don't, why do you guys ask me for tutorials? when I'm bad at speaking, y'all already know <laughs> what it's like. So let's say we have just like a sheet draped over this sphere. It'll be pretty simple. Right here, up here, there's not going to be many wrinkles because it's being stretched over something. Stay tuned. But since this is like the top part and there's something being pushed right up against the fabric from underneath, there's not going to be many wrinkles here. I just knocked over my pen cap. It's more of when we get to down here is when there's going to be more wrinkles because there's nothing underneath here now. Once we get to around here, there's no longer something underneath it to kind of give it shape. So it kind of just falls and does whatever it wants. And again, how this wrinkles up is completely dependent on what kind of fabric and stuff that you have. But if this is a sheet and it's thinner, there's going to be looks like a ghost. <laughs> since this is a thinner fabric, since it's a sheet, it's going to maybe like kind of fold and curve. This is the part where I mentioned to look at references again, because when it comes to these parts of drawing clothes and other types of fabric, it really is a trial in everything. And you'll look at how certain materials fold and crease. Since this is the example of the sheet, I can talk about that. But for more specific examples, you would need to look up references. But yes, gravity. This is a sphere with a curtain sheet thing over it. To recap, there's no wrinkles here because there's an object underneath it. And then for here, there's no object. So there's nothing to give it a structure. So there we go. There's gravity. We gravity. <laughs> the next cause of wrinkles is being stretched and pulled. Let's say we have a person just pulling like a scarf or something. So when you're pulling a piece of fabric, there won't be many wrinkles in the center, but there will be more wrinkles towards wherever it's being pulled from. So for example, in this little sketch, there's a person pulling a fabric like this. And so there's not going to be many wrinkles here, but there's going to be more wrinkles where the hand is. You should also remember that wrinkles themselves, like what are they? Because in real life, they're not just lines. Like if we look at my sleeve right here, ignore the cat hair. It's like, it's not just random lines. Like this is a 3D thing poking up and this is another 3D thing poking up. So there would be shading and stuff along the edges to make it look like that, which is what I'm doing here. These aren't the best wrinkles, but I think you understand my point. <laughs> These types of wrinkles are what you would see like around here. Like if we look at this tight fitting clothing, when it gets to around the hips, there are these wrinkles like down here because at this point it's the fabric being stretched around the hips. So if, think of it like this. When it's being pulled, just think of it as being flattened. And then you would draw the wrinkles wherever it's being like pulled from. So next up we have clothing being bunched up. So when clothing's being bunched up, you can think of it as clothing being folded. So let's say we have a shirt. I think the best example would be in this like armpit area. So we've got a person wearing a shirt. So like, so when you think about a shirt, if a shirt is laying out just flat, it's in this 
sort of shape. And when it's like this, there won't be many wrinkles because it's all laid out. But when you're wearing a shirt and you put your arm down and this moves down, this part right here gets all bunched up and folded. And so there would always be wrinkles in around that area. And when there is wrinkles, again, think of the gravity up here. Since there's something right here, i.e. the shoulder, there isn't going to be many wrinkles here. But over here, since these two pieces of fabric are being like folded and pushed together, there would be wrinkles right here. Things being bunched up like this and things being stretched tend to go a little together, I think, because again here it's being stretched around the shoulder, which is causing this bunching up right here. And there might also be some bunching up underneath the chest if your character has a chest, because again it's being stretched over the breast and then bunched up underneath here. So movements, I talked about movements a little bit. Like I was saying earlier, movements themselves aren't a type of wrinkle, but depending on what kind of movement your character is making, it'll cause a different type of wrinkle. So let's say we have someone raising their arm. When you think about a person raising their arm, just imagine what is happening with the fabric. If you raise your arm up, what's happening? When it comes to the fabric right here along the torso and then up here on the forearm, it's being pulled. But then let's say your character has, I should have, Planning is awesome. <laughs> so let's say your character is like bending their arm when it's up. So this fabric along here is being stretched, but then this fabric up here is being bunched. You need to really think about what's happening in the movement to know what kinds of folds and stuff. You really need to think about what is going on with the fabric to know what kinds of folds and everything to make. So again, here. The armpit area so it's going to be bunched this is in the other armpit <laughs> as i like to call it the elbow crease so it's going to be bunched then right here it's being pulled so there's going to be some pull lines and stuff and this is another great time to mention that pieces of clothing are like set in stone things and what i mean by that is like you can't change the shape of them and they, they like many things they are a three-dimensional object i think that's something that i've talked about in a lot of these tutorials and by a lot i mean my other two <laughs> i think that that's something people tend to forget whenever they're drawing something whether it's a body or hair or clothes it's always a three-dimensional object and people don't quite remember that and so you need to think about all sides of the object so let's say like when this person is pulling their arm up the size of the shirt doesn't change and so the shirt would be higher up on this side, but it's not being pulled up on this side, so it would be lower. And again, it's a three-dimensional object, and so it's higher up on this side, but lower on this side. And so you might see the back of the shirt from over here, and then you have like the body there, but you wouldn't draw anything like that over here. Because at this point, it's not just a shirt sitting here, it's a shirt if you were to pull it up from this side, but not this side, and so it's kind of at like a diagonal angle. <laughs> and then that's something that I use a lot in my art. Let me see if I have any examples. Like if you look at skirts and stuff, I always draw flowy skirts as we all often do. And it's just a very helpful thing to pay attention to because it just can add, it can add a lot of life. And movements don't just come from the person themselves. They can come from an external source too. So let's say we have a person as we all often draw and let's say there's wind. We can have this person wearing a skirt and then a tight shirt. So then you can see different types of materials interacting with different movements. So if let's say there's wind coming from, oh, let's say we have wind coming from this direction. And so the skirt would be blowing this way. It'd be kind of in this cone-ish shape, I guess you could say, because the wind is pushing the skirt this way. And again, since it's a three-dimensional object, you would see the other parts of the skirt that you wouldn't really see if she was just standing there. But then on the other hand, let's say she has like a tight fitting shirt. You would still have those like bunched up wrinkles, but if it's tight, it's probably not going to budge much from movement. Whereas a skirt, since it's a looser article of clothing, it'll move around a lot more. And again, the fabrics that your character is wearing is coming into play. All of these different things can apply differently to different articles of clothing and different types of fabric. So just keep that in mind whenever you're drawing something. And lastly, another nice little thing to keep in mind are the seams of clothing. This isn't necessarily a wrinkle thing, but more of just a thing to add a little bit more interest to your drawings. I personally 
like to draw <laughs> a lot of seams and a lot of wrinkles and designs and stuff. When it comes to these like shoulder areas, I normally make the seam very obvious because sleeves are attached to the main piece of fabric, which is the body, and then a different piece of fabric, which is the sleeve, and then they're sewn together. These types of seams are a lot more obvious, but you might also have a hem of a neckline and stuff like that. Maybe you have a different type of a snazzy shirt and there's a seam down the middle. Really, seams are a fun way to add a little bit more like visual interest to your clothing and just to make something as plain as like a regular tank top into something a little bit more exciting to look at. To recap, pay attention to what the fabric is being wrapped around, if there's anything underneath it, if there's anything being pulled, and then if there's any sort of external movement. So again, if we have a character like this who has the boobs, <laughs> there's not going to be a lot of wrinkles around there because there's a form underneath it. If it's tight fitting, it'll bunch up underneath the chest. If it's loose fitting, it's going to just kind of hang down from the breast area. And then it's going to, if it's tight fitting again, it'll be bunched up in the waist and then stretched out at the hips. So I am going to touch on shoes really quickly. I am planning on making a whole separate tutorial about shoes because shoes are a whole different thing, but I will break down some basics of shoes just for you really quickly. So shoes are a little bit of a different shape then feet. So that's why we have the ankle here. I always break my feet down into three shapes. So we'll have, ignoring that, we'll have this heel, we'll have like the foot part, and then the toes. So we have this like elongated triangle here, this sort of trapezoid-like shape, and then another triangle. There are shoes that match the foot shape a lot more precisely, and then the shoes will look more like a foot like those godforsaken like toe shoes. <laughs> but let's say we're just drawing a simple sneaker. Those tend to be a little bit bulkier. There's always the sole of the shoe. Pretty much every shoe, there's the sole of the shoe. And then there tends to be this like toe part, which tends to be a bit taller than the actual toes themselves. When it comes to shoelaces, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Like let's say we have this shoe right here. We have a toe. You can just, do like simple lines as laces and that's fine. But for me personally, I like to add more dimension to them. I always like to think of the shoelaces more as a ribbon than shoelaces. We'll have this like ankle sort of cut here. And just like clothing, just pay attention to the different types of seams in a shoe. The best advice that I can give for shoes right now is to just look, take a pair of shoes that you have, just look at them. Like there's this part right here, which is like the tongue, and then there's always usually a seam right here. There's like some seams in the back and just stuff like that. Just really pay attention to those sort of things. To draw a foot kind of more in motion, and if you want to draw, <laughs> if you wanted to draw something, a little bit more like this, where there's more movement to it. Okay, Leo. If you wanted to draw a shoe that has like a little bit more movement to it. I cannot remember for the life of me where I heard this tip, so I'm so sorry, but a really helpful piece of advice that I was given probably from some random person on the internet is to draw the sole of the shoe first. So let's say you wanted to draw kind of a bottom view of the shoe. There's always kind of this weird shape to it. So you always draw the sole of the shoe first and then from there build up. So you would have that thicker part and then kind of the same rules of drawing the rest of. Kind of similar to how I had up here where there's like the toes and then the base and then the heel. And again, like I said, I was going to make a different video all about shoes, but there's some basic stuff that you can really apply to any shoe. Like let's say you're drawing a pair of heels, then you would be standing on your toes a little bit more. You have this part, have the heel, and then the toes, and then you would just draw the soles and everything. And then with boots, they'd be a little bit thicker, but still, same principle. Got the base, got the toes, got that. So, there we go. Let me know if you want shoes to be the next tutorial that I make, or if you want me to focus on something else first, but here we go. This is what I have offered for clothing as per usual. I'm really bad at speaking and really bad at explaining things. <laughs> I try not to use fancy technical terms because oftentimes I just find that confusing, at least when I'm learning stuff. So hopefully I spoke in a way that was helpful and even understandable because we've been new that my English is awful, even though it's my first and only language I speak. <laughs> also feel free to leave any comments down below if there's any questions that you have after this. And once again, don't feel like this is the only way to draw clothing, you can figure out your own way once you practice and stuff. <laughs> Keep in mind these fundamentals that I talked about, but in terms of drawing 
wrinkles in your own style. That just takes a lot of practice. And again, that's another theme with all of these tutorials is just practice, 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 because that is the best way to improve. You can sit here and watch this video as many times as you want, but the only way you will ever improve is if you draw. So be sure to do that. <laughs> Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and let me know if it was helpful to you. I definitely try my best. If you're new here, subscribe. I post new art videos every single week. I'll occasionally do tutorials like this, but I mostly just make illustrations that I enjoy. And you can also follow me on any social media that will be on screen now and linked in the description box below. If you could follow me on Instagram, that would be the best place to follow me because that is where I post art give little updates on videos and just have more content in general. And there will also be a video on screen now and linked in the iCard for you to check out if you're interested. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next week.